Beaver's side. Good evening, Mr. White. Good evening, Mrs. Angel. How are you? I am super, super excited to be here. We've got an amazing special guest. We got lots to talk about. Um, we are midweek recording, which is always yeah. a good time. Hump day um, in a teacher's life is always a difficult um, but well earned day. Hence, um, obviously, a midweek wine. That's what, what we call it, isn't it? Excellent. Cheers, sir. Sure. Um, cheers. Because because there's a lot of good work has been achieved in the two days, um, two days, three days previously. Exactly. We're on the and downhill only slide. Two more sleeps to Friday. Two more sleeps to Friday. Um, all right. So what we are here for is all about celebrating teaching, um, which is what the Teachers Change Lives podcast is all about. We are going to be talking to somebody super inspiring today. Uh, before we get into that, I want to say a big thank you to our awesome sponsors. Video Pro, who have, uh, through supporting us, are uh, supporting teachers all around Australia and around the world. Um, thank you so much for the audio and visual equipment. Uh, it's great to have our listeners tuning in from America and the United Kingdom. And Spain. Maybe even Spain. Maybe, Spain. maybe. Now we're going to check the numbers at the end of this week and we're going to see if we have reached into any further parts of the world and anything that our listeners can do to um, engage with and share our podcast with those people around the world would be amazing. Yep. Um, so we can connect with the 80 million, 80 awesome million teachers, 80 million teachers around the world who are just uh, changing lives on a daily basis. Indeed. So we are going to be interviewing a an inspiring person today and she's been very patient as we have uh got ready for this interview so i reckon we should kick <laughs> right on into it so we don't waste any more of her very valuable time Indeed. so let's kick off our inspiring story for today <laughs> Okay, so we have uh, Jenna Cullen from Marsden State High School with us today. Uh, we're super excited to have her. She did her primary schooling at Dubbo Christian College as well as her secondary schooling. She has uh, is a very learned young lady. She went to the University of Queensland and completed a Bachelor of Arts. She has a Bachelor of Education from Griffith, Griffith University and also has a master Masters of Education from Queensland University of Technology. I like that she's just tapped into so many of the universities around Queensland. She's, there's yeah. no favouritism there. So uh, tell us a bit more <laughs> about um, about Jenna, Wadi. Jenna is a 2022 Schools Plus Teaching Fellow and currently serves as the HOD Teaching and Learning at Marsden. She was recognised in 22 as the educator on the Educator Hot List and is a Rising Star recipient. In addition, she was a finalist for Innovation in Teaching and the 2021 Queensland Teach X Awards. Her team has received the Australian Education Award for Professional Learning Program in 2020, 2021 and 2022. In addition, Marsden SHS has received recognition in the Australian HR Awards in 2021 and 2022 for professional learning and graduate support, regardless of industry. Jenna is dedicated to facilitating a comprehensive professional learning environment for over 250 teachers with a focus on recognising their expertise and helping them effectively translate research and policy into the classroom. She loves to geek out about science of learning, early teaching and early career teacher support, sorry, and communities of practice. Jenna, welcome. Great to have you. Hello. Woo-hoo. <laughs> wow, what a CV you have got going there, young lady. That is that. phenomenal. On Look the at all you list. achieved in 2020, 2021 and 2022. Amazing. I know. Big three I years. Like, I know. Yeah, I, I think for all educators, the last couple of years have been um, tumultuous, to say the least. So <laughs> it's been wonderful to see some of the um, wonderful opportunities that come out of crisis as well. Very, very true. true. And really mm. doubling down in that time of crisis. So I, last week in our interview, I introduced you, gave a bit of a teaser about you. 
And I said that Marsden State High School is the largest school in Australia. Did I make that up? We are the largest secondary uh, school in Australia. Um, and mm. yeah, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's, yeah, <laughs> we're a pretty so big school. So how many students? 3,750, I think, this year. 3,750 wow. students all in one school. That is phenomenal. Hence the 250 teachers yes. that you are facilitating professional learning for. Yeah, it's a that wonderful is, community. That is amazing. That's very, very exciting work. And I know I know that you say in here that you are um, doing the best job in the world and you absolutely love what you're doing and the people that you get to work with. So shall we kick off with you telling us first, so you've obviously become a teacher. Um, so who's the teacher that positively impacted your life? I love this question. Um, when you first asked me this question, um, I really thought originally about all of the teachers who helped me with my own teaching experience. So I thought immediately of all of those mentors that I had at my school when I first started and the people who were there to help me understand what it was to be a teacher and pick me up off the floor on a Wednesday afternoon after a really difficult year nine class um, and, you know, give me some ideas because <laughs> I was out of them. Um, and so that's that's been a really wonderful group of, of colleagues to have worked with. Uh, but if I had to choose one teacher to talk about, uh, I would be talking about Kate Bain, who was my senior high school English teacher. Beautiful. So tell us more about Kate Bain. And, and do you know if Kate Bain is still teaching at the moment? Yes, yeah, she is. She's still teaching. Um, Excellent. Yeah, yeah. It's a really inspiring person. So uh, Kate was one of those people who could see a version of yourself that you wanted to be. And I think that the best teachers always do that for you. They can see that you're capable of being a little bit kinder, a little bit stronger, a little bit smarter. Um, and they hold that vision of you in their minds and they hold you to that standard. And that was always what she did for us uh, as a class. And I can definitely remember even today sometimes when you didn't quite meet the standard, you know, and, uh, and you wanted to go back and do better and try again. And to have that support was transformational. And I think that's when we say teachers change lives, it's, it's so much of that influence. Does she know that she had that um, that impact on your life? Have you had the opportunity to share that with her? Uh, she's she's uh, uh, we've connected on social media since that time, and so it was really lovely to um, watch her adventures as well as she would um, travel around the world and expand her horizons and do sorts of wonderful things. And yeah, it's been really lovely to share that. But I don't know if she knows that uh, she was that number one teacher she's for that me teacher. yeah she's that person who, yeah she um, does now yes yeah which is very very excited <laughs> and i love i love um this part particularly of your story where obviously kate um oh sorry sorry miss spain um miss <laughs> bain was your um was the teacher who who made you feel seen as a student uh, but then it's when you're talking in your professional life, who are the teachers that have changed your lives? It was those people in the early career. And that's the, the field that you're working in now. You're, mm. you're, you're working with all of those 250 teachers, but are so many of them at Marsden are early career teachers, which so I'm sure that you are that person for so many of those students, which is mm. um, a lovely little um, full circle kind of moment, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got... 30% of our staff are within their first three years of experience. And that's been true for as long as I've been working at Marsden, which is nearly 10 years now. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So 30, say that again, 30% 30%. are in their first three years. That's right, yeah. And so because our school has grown astronomically, um, I think we were at 1,700 when I first started. And so- and how, many, how many years have you been there? Uh, nine or 10. Yeah, I think this is my 10th yeah. year. And so 
adding that size to get to 3,700 every year, it's so important that we've got really strong um, programs, mentorship, professional development. And one of the things that we're really proud of at Marsden is how much we value supporting our early career teachers. Um, in the industry, we know that up to 50% of people leave within the first five years. And we've been able to have a retention rate of 95%. And even some of those people who have left have left for leadership positions. Um, so within their first five years. So that's been something that we're really proud of. And we want to promote to other people the sorts of support that is really necessary for initial teacher education. Wow. So a retention rate of 95% of the teachers at your school were teaching the profession for five years or more. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So, so rather than wow. have, uh, than leaving, yeah, they're they're remaining in mm. education. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you do that? Because I, you know, I think most teachers would would see that as a big problem. These masses of teachers leaving, um, and taking with them a lot of experience and expertise, and that's one of the reasons we've started this podcast is to mm -hmm. shine light on the positive sides of teaching. To hope, you know, to do many things, but one of which is to hold the experienced teachers in the classroom. How do you go about doing that? For me, it starts um, way back at the classroom. So one of the things that we do at Marsden is something we call the Marsden Guarantee. So we say, if you choose to go into education, we will make sure you have a university mentor. We will make sure that you can um, undertake a prac here at Marsden at some point in your teaching um, degree. And then the work that we do with pre-service teachers is really crucial as well. So we make sure that our pre-service teachers, um, we have up to 450 a year, which is a good amount. Yeah. Oh, wow. So she, did, she didn't stutter then, in case you're wondering, uh, Mr. White. She said 450? Oh, yeah. Goodness. So, um, you know, wow. <laughs> there's, there's so many parts that go into this ecosystem of what happens, but having that large amount of pre-service teachers, we make sure that they have uh, education at our school, which really helps bridge the gap between practice and what happens at uni. So we focus a lot on behavior management. We focus on the science of learning and we try and make sure that we've tailored education that supports them. Um, and then from there, uh, we have within the first three years of your life at Marsden, we have specific targeted programs with professional learning along the way to make sure that you've got support. We've got mentors within your first three years. We have um, programs for observation. Um, we make sure that professional learning is flexible and available in a lot of different formats as well. And one of the things that I'm really proud of is we have a real culture of open doors so that you can work together and observe each other. And then the last thing that I'm really passionate about is our professional learning communities, which is um, action research taking place in the classroom with groups of up to six teachers working together on projects. So having that collective efficacy and everyone working together, I think is really crucial. Mm. You must have a great relationship with the universities as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that I always find strange is when people will sort of play a blame game and say, oh, it's, it's this person's fault or that's that person's fault that we've got issues with teacher retention. So the way that I look at it is how do we all work together because everyone has the same goal, that teacher, the school, the university. So how do we work together to make sure that we um, support them? Yeah. Very, very exciting stuff. And I know that Marsden, uh, and which is why they've won all of these awards and their, their recognition is um, profound across, across Australia, but particularly, I know that they were proud of that Australian HR awards because that's that's even going beyond that's be going beyond um, education. So that's not about education. That's about all industries uh, in Australia and being recognised for the way that they recruit staff, support staff, um, and and um, retain staff, and also 
um, build them up to send them on to further leadership positions and then to do great things as well. Uh, it's very, very inspiring, inspiring work and on an enormous scale, mm. which is, is the, the really, really impressive, impressive thing. When, so, when sorry, I was going to say, when we um, beat out Coles and Telstra and I knew that we were doing some of it from like a tin shed, uh, you know, it was a really wonderful moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's so Great. cool i mean and you know, full respect to coles and telstra out there and um uh but yeah and and i, I just a, a humble little school okay not little a humble school in Logan, uh with some deeply passionate educators who who knew that they could do more and and i think the most exciting thing about marsden is that the the year-on-year -year refinement of what you're doing there's never, uh, you're not throwing things out, you're building upon things and refining things every year. So I think that this, uh, the fact that there's this commitment to the the plan and as people come in and go, they just, they, you garner more support for what the plan is, which is not easy to do. Often people want to come in with their own idea and pull in a different direction, but Marsden has made, been able to maintain that direction and, and really hold true to what it values which is with you know, very inspiring work mm -hmm. and they share they share as well which i think really needs to be acknowledged so they're not they're winning all these awards but they're also not hiding what they're doing so they are sharing with you know i, I hope i'm not speaking out of turn here tell us about some of the people that you shared shared your practices with oh gosh um <laughs> we've we've been so lucky to connect with schools um across Australia. So we've been working with schools in WA, in Victoria. Um, we've been working with schools. I'm going to be presenting in Singapore this year, which is very exciting. So we're going to be sharing what we're doing for initial teacher education support. And yeah, for me, everything in education um, should be, you know, that we're sharing it and we're growing and learning from each other. So I'm really excited that I get the opportunity to do that. Beautiful. It's for the greater good. It's not just about one community. It's about having an impact on that global sta um, stage or at the yeah, national or, or global stage. Mm -hmm. Very, very exciting. And so I want to talk about a number of things. I want to start off with science of learning because mm -hmm. I know that you, uh, it's something that we both share a deep um, passion for mm -hmm. and commitment to. So do you want to talk to our learner, uh, to our, our listeners a bit more about what the science of learning is and what's what you're doing at Marsden to, to deepen everybody's knowledge and put it into the classrooms? Absolutely. Um, so this has been a, a huge passion of mine over the last few years. I've been so lucky to work with some wonderful mentors at my school. Um, and one of my mentors was Don Cameron, and he's um, been a really important um, leader in bringing the science of learning into Marsden. And one of the things that we really look at is how can we understand the way that psychology, education, neuroscience overlaps? What can we understand about the way the brain learns? And if we know this, how do we then apply it to what we're doing in the classroom? when i first encountered some of the ideas from the science of learning some of it i was going hell yes no one said this before but i know it's true i know it i've done this i know it's true and then some of it rocked my practice some of it i was like wow okay i mean this looks shiny and nice when someone walks past my classroom but am i actually doing the best to support learning or not and so asking yourself some tough questions like that can be really fascinating. Um, and so we've had some opportunities over the last few years with our PLCs, uh, our professional learning communities to start to delve into what it looks like when we apply these principles to Marsden. And we've also been able to revolutionize our um, teaching and learning um, pedagogies as well. So we've embedded it into um, our frameworks at the school, our teaching and learning frameworks. And we've been working on educating the students, the community and the teachers, because we want everyone understanding the conversation 
and how that affects students' learning, which is our, our business. Love it. Mm. And so how long have you how long have you been on the science of learning journey? I think this would be uh, the second year that um, that I've been involved with the science of learning um, and the school, yeah, has absolutely saturated everything that we do. So that's through the way that we observe, the way that we look at student behaviour, the way that we um, put together unit plans, lessons, PowerPoints. We're starting to really think about at every level what does this actually impact in the classroom and how do we get the best learning out of our students? Love it. And in, in true Marsden fashion, the, the school is always all in. And once again, no easy task when you have 250 teachers getting 250 teachers on the same page about something uh, is... Challenging. Like, it, <laughs> I don't, don't feel like that's a big enough word. I don't think um, I'm I, no, and I'm with two English teachers, so I don't leave the PE biology teacher here to flounder for words. But daunting. challenging, daunting. It is. It's. It's. Um. Yeah. It's. 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 It's a big task. Very. Very big task. So that's very exciting work. Uh, and I commend the Marsden community for for getting on board. And I hear so you're going to be visiting some schools in London who are who are, are implementing science of learning. So where are you going? So we can give a shout out to those schools. Do you know what your itinerary is? I don't actually. Um, we're working with UQ and the Science of Learning Research Centre. So I said, all right, where are the schools? What am I going to go visit? And they're like, we'll give you the names later. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'll, I'll let you know when I know, Shaz. <laughs> well, I reckon you'll be heading to uh, Michaela. Mm -hmm is one of the leading schools over there in science of learning that are doing using science of learning and everything. And Dixon, all of the Dixon schools are amazing uh, practitioners of science of learning as well. So I can't wait to get over there sometime soon as well. Wonderful. I might even piggyback off your, um, your trip and just turn up in your suitcase <laughs> awkwardly uh, near Big Ben. I'll come too. Okay, perfect. Road yeah. trip. Road trip. We're, we're taking the podcast to our UK listeners. Stay tuned. Fantastic. We'll wait till Jenna lets us know what time of year we're heading yep. over. And yep. we'll, um, work that yeah, out. we'll we'll set up in the middle um, of a park somewhere and, yeah, just uh, yeah, be a part of it all. I love it. Well, it'll need to be summer then. Okay, so June, July. That sounds good. Jenna, are you writing this Wimbledon? down, Jenna? Absolutely. Yeah, taking notes. Excellent. Yep. Wonderful. Good. Yeah, the ashes <laughs> are on too. That'll be great. I'm up Perfect. for that. It's going to be a long trip. That's great. Sounds sounds wonderful. Let the family know because because we know Whitey's got a a one three and five year old. Jen, ah. so he. I'm, I'm sure, looking forward I'm to sure getting away. I'm sure Mrs. White will be all for him heading off uh, for, on a it. couple of months road trip. Um, <laughs> awesome. I want to talk about one other thing. Well, I've got. To, I want to talk about lots of other things off air. We were talking about Chat GPT, and. We know how innovative um, Marsden is and I know how tech savvy Jenna is and I'm not and I'm excited about chat GPT but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I'm excited for the educational um, opportunities with it. Let's discuss. Who's first? Who's got opinions? <laughs> Well, I think one of the first reactions you have as an educator to something like this is going, oh, God, the students are all going to use this to cheat. What's going to happen next? And it's it's quite confronting. Yes. And so one of the things that I think is interesting was immediately the university sector had to shift the way that they were providing assessment tasks. Because I think if we put our brains back to being university students and you had something like that available to you, It'd be an interesting outcome. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Um, of, of course, I think schools are a little bit slower to uh, to move sometimes. There's so many layers and levels um, that are involved. But one of the things that I'm most excited about is the potential for complementing teachers' work and potentially easing teacher workload. We know over and over again, when teachers talk about the reason that they leave the profession, workload is a huge part of it. And so the idea that you could 
create resources and work with this technology to reduce your workload, I think is very tantalizing. I would say you're probably talking Absolutely. dirty. Actually. Yeah. You are, that is that is teacher dirty talk. <laughs> that is, get up when that you is. are saying reducing <laughs> teacher workload. Yes, you heard it here first. I love it. We can it. Write, write your reports for you. We can do all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah. Well, Difficult you were letters. Before, the opportunity to, to write that, um, that email, the um, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed email and inserting behaviors. Um, <laughs> Uh, so many capabilities for ChatGPT. Have you used it at at all yet, Mr. White? I have. Um, the first time I found it, I, I was just fascinated and thought, well, this is just going to be fun. So I got it to write a, a poem in the style of Dr. Seuss um, <laughs> with my three children as the characters. Oh. And it really wasn't very good. And I told <laughs> it it wasn't very good. And it actually apologised for not being very good. <laughs> right, and um, write but, me an apology but then, for your terrible poem. <laughs> that did it itself. Um, and then I got it to write another one. It was a little bit better. But, yeah, if you ask it, I asked them to do something on um, on Jane Austen and then because I was looking at something around her, and that was pretty good. And I'm teaching um, Oscar Wilde short stories to my year sevens at the moment, so I got it to write a short story in the style of Oscar Wilde. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. It's good fun. I'm actually um, I'm emceeing a wedding on um, on Sunday, and I'm going to warn the speakers against using ChatGPT to write their to write their speech um, because you know they they should know the insert groom's name and insert bride's name well enough not to have to use it. <laughs> wow. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Nothing like a fresh gag. <laughs> nice work. I, you're so with the times. Like even bringing Chat GBT into it, that, I'm impressed. With I was it. lucky. My, my brother introduced me to Chat GBT last year, so I've I've had a bit of an opportunity to play with it. Um, but I agree, Jenna. I think it's an opportunity um, more than something to fear. I know a lot of people in the English department in, at my school were a bit dubious about what we can do, but there was a you know we're all pretty positive about what it can do. It's just a case of making sure that we. You know, students aren't going to be able to cheat in the same way. Like, this is why we have exams. We sit them down. We get them to handwrite things with no technology. I mean, there's not really much scope for cheating um, unless you do a take-home assignment. Okay, that's fine. There, there might be a way around that. Um, but, yeah, it's, 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 it's excitement, really, from, from my corner. And I think one of the interesting things is to, as high school teachers, we know our students really well. We know their voices. Mm -hmm we know their ideas and so if you're a university professor you might be dealing with a cohort of 200 and the only time you'll have contact with them is that essay at the end whereas for us i i know how jacob writes i know i know steve's voice <laughs> <laughs> so yes true. that's right and what you can actually do is and i i tested this i i got it you know um turned it in checks every was it a chain of seven words I gave it a bunch of words that it wrote that ChatGPT had written. I said, did you write this? And he said, yes, I did write this. Oh. So it did tell me that it, mm. um, you know, it recognised its own work. And so, oh. you know, that might be useful as well. Ah, oh, um, teachers, you know, you really... are you hearing that? <laughs> yes. I've given That's it a little cool. bit That's cool. You could be copying and pasting work into ChatGPT and then asking, did you write this? Yes. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Mm. Everyone's fears are just are being alleviated just now by by Mr. White. Impressive. <laughs> that was based I'm not on regularly a couple impressed tries. by you, Mr. White. Oh, look, I haven't, here I am. I think the study size needs to be a little bit bigger. Uh, the okay, data okay, samples right. need to be a little bit bigger. Yeah. One, one of one. I'm calling that 100%. Right. Now, 100%. Lock it in. Lock it in. Absolutely. That's numbers, baby. All right. Um, <laughs> Jenna, would you be willing to play the alphabet game against Mr. White. I'm so willing. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Bring it All on. Right. So here we go. Okay. We are going to, so the alphabet game is when uh, I will give you a, both a question and then I will give you a letter in the alphabet for you to come up with your answer. All right, so I'm going to give you a question. Then I'll give you the, uh, the letter and then you're both just going to shout out your best answer. Uh, obviously, I'm the judge, and the judge's oh. word is final. Ah, <sighs> bias. Okay. Do, do, do we understand? Yes, we do. Here we go. 
<laughs> name, give a student name starting with B. Brian. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Prove me wrong. You're right. No, well, you're right. B, B is right. B, B, Brian. Yes, I'll take Brian. All right. <laughs> Here we go. One nil. I don't think I've ever been up before. <laughs> you absolutely have not, and I feel I feel uncomfortable. All right? No pressure, Jenna. No pressure. Okay. Here we go. Name a school starting with M. Marsden State High School. Thank you so much, Jenna. You're exactly right. Marsden State High School would be right, and I guess that means we're at a tiebreaker. So here we go. Where am I? Which one am I going to pick? How can I skew this? Um, here we go. Are we ready? <laughs> Name something found in a pencil case starting with S. <laughs> it seems like it should be easy. I know. <laughs> I was thinking like... sizable <laughs> amount of pencils. <laughs> a soccer ball. Unless Jenna comes up with something better, which I'm sure she can, surely. It's not I'm easy under pressure. I know. <laughs> Sizable amount of pens. <laughs> or we could um, maybe a, some sort of device that we use to hold pieces of paper together. Stapler. Oh, stapler! <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't put a stapler in your pencil case. It doesn't fit. It's too big. It's a really small one. Um, I'm giving that one to Jenna. I know listeners are going to be uh, well, shocked. I'm done. not accepting sizable amount of pens. Um, so well done, Jenna. You well done, maintain, well done. You, may, you maintain the unbeaten record of our inspiring uh, interviewees. I'll as the get you one day, gadget. <laughs> Great work. Um, all right. So before we go to our socials. Um, uh, what about you, Jenna? Do you have um, anything that you can direct our listeners to go and have a look at if they're interested in finding out more about Marsden or what you're doing in any of your amazing work that you do that is being led there? So one of the things to keep your eyes peeled for this year is we are going to be creating a series on the art of learning and we're going to have the science of learning, what happens at Marsden, and we're going to take you through all of the steps. It's going to be up on YouTube. Therefore, communities, families, uh, initial teacher education, and we can't wait to share it with everyone. That's right. super exciting. Awesome. And I'm assuming it's Marsden, shs.eq.edu.au. I'm, I'm sure it'll be only a Google away, Sharon. Google Marsden, as, <laughs> it's, as it sounds, State High School, Queensland, um, to find out even even more. And I'm assuming there, there would be some links to um, all of those awesome resources. Definitely. Thank Good you one. so much, Jenna. You have been uh, an absolute delight and yes. doing some amazing work there. Please say a big thank you to the team at Marsden. And in fact... If you got all of your teachers at Marsden to be listening to Aha. the Teachers Change Lives podcast and it's the PD. 450 prac teachers that come through, Marsden could single-handedly <laughs> nearly take us to our 80 million um, teachers worldwide. I, I think, feel you like you could, you could take us so close just with your one school. I thought you were going to say so, close to our 80 millionth listener. Uh, yes, close, so close. So um, <laughs> get on board, you awesome, awesome Marsden PD. I'll, I'll put it Great in the next. PD. Yeah, I'll put it in the next PD update. <laughs> Absolutely, love it. and it's a requirement. It is a requirement to tune into the <laughs> weekly episodes. I love it, Jenna. Um, so please, please congratulate um, the whole team, the enormous team at Marsden yes, well um, State High School all pulling in the same direction. They are changing so many lives, all of those 3,750 lives there. They are very lucky to be at such a great school, um, mm. such, such a thriving teacher population. I want to say a big shout out to Kate Bain as well. Yes. Uh, an absolute hero of the classroom. Um, not that Jenna's particularly old, but if she um, has inspired Jenna and she's continued to teach and inspire people 
beyond Jenna. She's she's had a great career and is continuing to change all of those lives. Mm-hmm. So uh, thank you to Kate Bain for the work that you're doing in your classroom as well. What uh, what an awesome teacher you are. Yeah, yeah. So if uh, anyone's wanting to get on board with our podcast, they can find us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok on at Teachers Change Lives Podcast. And they can find us on Twitter, which is TCL under, pod underscore Shaz or something like that. And um, your attention we, to detail, but we, I just we love. love no, do, do it. Google, Google search it. Google, I'm not sure. Google and figure it Absol- out. Absolutely. Um, we'd love you to su- subscribe, um, so you can't miss. So you don't, you don't want to miss a minute of this. This is this is gold. This is gold. perfectly structured gold. Uh, so, so that you don't miss a minute of it, we need you to favourite us on your favourite podcast channel. We would love to for you to give us a five-star rating because we're worth nothing less than five stars, quite evidently. <laughs> and we would love you to leave a review. So why do you tell me? Tell me there's a review. Uh, there's a review. I've got a review here. Here we go. Excellent. This is great. It's wonderful to see people highlighting the great work teachers do. Thank you, Sally W. Love your work, Sally W. Uh, thank you for staying tuned to us. If you want to get involved, we would love you to sell, send a wisecrack, send your teaching tale. We would love you to reach out. If you've got a great story to tell, we'd, like yeah. Jenna has told tonight, uh, we would love to tell your inspiring story. Or if you want to nominate somebody else for an inspiring story, we would love, love, love to hear from you. And you can reach out to us on any of our social media platforms. So um, I'm going to say thank you to Video Pro again for the great work that they are doing with audiovisual around Australia and for giving us our equipment. Um, we're both going to say thanks to Jenna again. Yes. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks, Jenna. <laughs> thank Keep up you. the good work. Have a great end of the week. Yes. Um, keep changing lives. You, Mr. White, keep changing lives. You, Miss Cullen, thank you, and keep changing lives. And see you later, everyone. We will see you next week. Good Bye. Bye. Bye.